Today on Java Drive, I'm going to be speaking with my friend Reveal Atlas. Reveal is an Italian and a New Yorker, so I think he ticks all the boxes on someone who knows a lot about coffee and has a long and passionate love affair with coffee. So today I'm just going to get him to share with us a little bit of his history with why he loves coffee so much, and he's going to go through a couple of different ways of making coffee at home that you might find interesting and also simple. Hi guys. Uh, coffee, well it's nature's sunshine. It's something you can drink, it makes you feel wonderful. But for me mostly it's about the experience. It's the, the flavor and the texture. At home we have a lot of different ways of making coffee and there's actually some very good espresso machines you can use. But um, I like to make different kinds of coffee. This is called a mocha pot and every single Italian mama in Italy has one of these. It makes a kind of a, a hybrid espresso, long black sort of thing. This is a hybrid one that does something else altogether that I was given. That you put milk in the top and the water in the bottom, coffee in the container, and it makes the coffee and then a secondary pressurization system frosts the milk so when you pour it out, ostensibly you have a cappuccino. And does it work, Reveal? No. And then we have the standard, box standard French press which makes a great, really great coffee. It's a strong coffee, it's um, a coffee that has a certain amount of, some would say, texture, which I happen to like sometimes and that's what I want. Um, and then of course we come over here to the really, really big Turkish coffee maker, in case you have a lot of friends over that want that. But what I like to use is this one for me, and really, really simple way of making coffee. Very, very fine grind, sugar, water. It turns into a very, very thick, syrupy coffee that you never, ever drink to the bottom of the grounds. Uh, but the flavor is, it's almost like a coffee dessert in a cup, so sometimes I get in the mood for this. And also, just to explain that the grind is much finer than espresso. Oh, much. It's powder. It's actually, if you, um, really important thing if you're making coffee at home is to use a burr grinder. If you don't have a burr grinder, invest in one. The normal kind of spice grinders just are very uneven and it doesn't work very well. A burr grind will give you a nice even grind, a lot of control over where you're at, and on the fine grind of it, it'll say Turkish or powder, and it really is like a powder. You have no grit in it at all. Uh, this is called a siphon coffee or a vacuum coffee, depending on how you want to call it. And what it is is it has a um, metal disc with a filter, and this filter can be paper, it can be metal, it can be cloth. In this, this particular case, it's cloth. And it inserts into this, like so, and then you secure it with this little spring that goes underneath. So that's your coffee receptacle. We usually do our coffee about a 1 to 15 sort of ratio, and you can... So one lot of coffee to 15 parts water, is that what yeah, you were saying? So, and we're talking about grams. So I would think grams of coffee to milliliters of water. And the nice thing about water, if you use this, it's actually a 1 to 1 ratio. So a liter of water is 1,000 milliliters. Um, and so that would and that would be grams equivalent in coffee. This particular grind, because I'm using cloth, I'm using kind of somewhere between a filter and a plunger sort of grind. And I'll put in about 30 grams of coffee, and I'll have about 500 grams of water. We're here with our coffee. We put in about 30 grams, and I'll take this off. We've also pre-measured our water at 500, uh, because the ratio would be about um, a liter to 60 or 70 grams. So we have. 500 milliliters of water and we have 30 grams of coffee and we put this on here. Now, at this point, we've sealed this off. So by way of a vacuum, um, one side's stronger than the other, it'll start to suck the water up through this stem and into this upper receptacle. Um, at that point, we'll start to stir it. It'll sit for about 70 seconds and then we'll take it off the heat and it'll reverse the process. And the vacuum pulls the water through the coffee. What it makes is a very, very rich cup of coffee, much like a, um, a French press, but it has the clarity of tea. So it's a really, really lovely drinkable cup of coffee and it's nice to see in the science. You can see here already that the water level is rising. You wanna make sure you don't stir coffee too much because that the agitation draws more of the, um, the bitter flavors out of the coffee. So basically just enough to get it wet. And, and that's the thing about um, coffee making is that the three steps would be wetting, dissolution, and distribution. So you have to wet that coffee, let it bloom a bit, and then do whatever you're gonna do in terms of your way of making it. Reveal, this is what they would call a siphon coffee. Siphon or a vacuum, yep. Okay, so it's got a, a, a rubber seal in there and that's what's creating the vacuum, is that yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. completely sealed off. 
coffee on top, water on the bottom. We're using a, 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 a small heating plate here, so it'll take a little bit of time. And now we've taken it off the heat, and so you can see here, even now, it's starting to drip down. It's not dripping, it's being pulled, and there'll be a point where you'll see the, the seal is broken, the vacuum goes in the opposite direction. So the seal broke, the vacuum has sucked all the water down, the coffee ground's getting actually quite dry right now. And at this point, I would go ahead and break the seal, just by doing that. Take that out, you put it in this little holder and you have a beautiful pot of coffee and that's just about right for me in the morning. Fantastic. Those of you that know me don't laugh. <laughs>